Before we get into the next topic, I just want to go over something that uh, that Kimbu ever sent to me to us on Twitter, which says that nothing prevents a full country or even non-fighting game players from rallying behind a player, even though you might never have heard of him. And I suppose that's true. But that happens with the All-Star game sometimes, too. Well, that's why Yao Ming got in, like, had more votes than Shaq. Right. A few years, right? So. Right. Yeah, I mean, it happened in the NHL that there was a campaign to send this guy who was not a bad player, but just an absolutely middle-of-the-road player, to the All-Star game. And I think they ended up, like, changing the rules. I actually forget what happened with that now. Hmm. It was a few years ago. But there was a major campaign to do that. Um, so it's that's an, always an issue with, with fan voting stuff, I don't know what Capcom would do in that kind of case. If you really were to be voted into the top eight, <laughs> um, you know, I, I don't know. I don't know what they would do. I don't know if they would. I, would I mean, say no I, offense. I, but. I would. I would just say that I couldn't make it. <laughs> yeah. No, you're going to be otherwise disposed. Actually, now <laughs> yeah, that I think about yeah, it. Yeah. Right, right, right. Uh-huh. That's true. So, That's true. There's no way I could make it there at the time. Right. You know? How could you get yeah, there? You'd exactly. Be... No one's flying me out. No. <laughs> No, you'll be far too busy. But yeah, that's an issue. That's for sure an issue. I don't know that that's going to happen. That seems like it would be pretty unlikely. But maybe if you're like from Brazil, you'll vote in the Brazilian player uh, that's in there. Like Like all of Mexico will vote in the Fruit Sea or something like that, right? So, yeah. Very very possible. Very possible. I guess we'll see. That's something to uh, talk about in the future, I suppose, if that were to come up. Um, Now I want to talk about uh, Canada Cup. Yes. And unfortunately not about the gameplay and a review of the tournament and all the fun that you had there, but about an interview that was done with Lap Chi, uh, who, of course, runs Canada Cup, uh, Canada Cup Gaming, and has been, you know, running majors up there um, for a while for a few years yeah i mean his goal has always been to showcase the talent in canada yeah that was one of the reasons why he did it he wasn't trying to make money or anything of course and he in a way he kind of feels like he succeeded in showcasing a lot of the talent and now it's just not profitable he tweeted recently that he lost 20 grand at this event and that had nothing to do with the bar tab or the dinner tab from right. after sunday night which both were massive. I mean, the bar tab and the dinner tab were like almost four thousand, like by itself, right? That's what happens when you buy one hundred and thirty-one Jaegers. <laughs> Jaeger bombs. Ridiculous, it's, dude. Like, but um, but uh, yeah, actually, I read that. So Troy okay. Kirkland of the Canada Quick Gaming also wrote a little uh, blog post on Canada Cup, which he said, "Yeah, that's the way it looks like it's going to be." Obviously. It's still a year away, so they could do another one, but, you know, it really all depends. It really all depends on Lap Chi, right? So, um, And the thing is that in the past, Capcom Cup has helped fly out players from across the ocean, which mm-hmm. is very, very expensive. But this year, that apparently didn't factor into the $20,000 loss, which is kind of what this was... Yeah, All he about. didn't fly anyone out this last year. Right. He specifically said, "I'm not doing that this year." Right. So, so they lost about twenty thousand Canadian dollars, which are more or less on par with U.S. dollars, depending on the year. Um, that's a lot of money, and it it wasn't through frivolous stuff like that. No. Um, so it it's just a it's just an expensive proposition. I mean, when I talk to tournament organizers in general, their costs are very high, mm-hmm. and they, you know, I've routinely heard people say that you know I'm betting twenty thousand dollars, I'm betting thirty thousand dollars that people will come to this event and that it'll go right. okay, okay, and I won't be in the poorhouse. Um sometimes I guess you you can't count on that. And that seems to be what happened with Canada Cup this year. They even cut out some expenses and they, you know, moved to a location that was maybe a little bit easier for people to get to in Vancouver mm-hmm. rather than in, in Calgary. And uh man, it just it didn't work out still. Yeah, I mean, the the interesting thing is, honestly, and I hate sounding like the old man in the room, but I am the old man in the room, right? I mean, a lot of people ask, how do you spend that much money? Like, I, I can't even... You don't even know the kind of stupid costs yeah. that you can incur. I mean, when not only do you have to rent out a hotel room, you have to rent out hotel rooms for all your staff, right? Because you don't want them to... You don't want your staff... You're trying to thank them, right? Yeah. You got to check out the you got to book the, the the actual venues which is super expensive got to pay for the AV because you can't hire your own guys to come in and do AV separate fee yeah separate fee 
You've got to rent like the stage equipment and all this internet, other stuff. Internet you is super pay expensive. For dude. Internet. Yeah. I have heard of internet being five digits in yeah. cost. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Or no, yeah. wait, five, yeah, five yeah, digits in five cost. Five digits in cost for a weekend and for stuff weekend. like that. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So, I mean, it's it's ridiculous. It is it, the amount. I mean, I've heard some, like, not necessarily for fighting game tournaments, but for similar kinds of events, like, just to ship stuff across country, you know takes like 10 10k just to do some stuff like that right i mean it's ridiculous how much some of these things cost yeah. a lot of people don't know this kind of thing right? yeah, yeah. So. if you've never run a major event and i haven't then it's hard <coughs> to know those things the only reason i know that is because i've talked with some of these people who do it right right yeah i mean yeah that's the thing right i mean Lapchi is balling and so some people are saying like if he was swimming in money what's 20k to him dude dude it's 20k like, I don't care how balling you are. You really have to think about this very carefully. Well, I, I didn't get from the article that he was complaining about it. That's not right. how it seemed to me mm-hmm, at all. Mm-hmm. In fact, he specifically says it's not really about the money. It's much more about how much time I have to invest. Note, he said, noting that when he's putting so much effort into running a fighting game tournament, he's not able to put that into his business. <coughs> um, wow, so the opportunity cost on top of the actual cost, like, <laughs> that's a lot. Yeah. Um, but in any case, it, he, he says it's not necessarily about the money. Um I don't think that he that he did this to like complain to everybody. To yeah, be like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I lost so much money. Right, that, right, right. that wasn't it. It was he wants he wants people to know why there might not be a Canada Cup next year. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, and that's not necessarily the same thing as he even says. It's about it's about the time. Yeah, yeah. I mean, he has a family. Yeah. He's got like a ton of businesses and stuff. So I mean, he's you you take a lot of time away to run these events and. Oh yeah, it's not like. You're just running it like that weekend. It's not like you're there for like the weekend and you're there for 72 right, hours right. and like that's it. No, it's those hours and it's all the many, many hours, the dozens into hundreds of hours that uh, that goes into planning. Yeah. So, I mean, it's unfortunate. And obviously, you know, uh, part of his cost, he's flown me out there, you know, uh, the last few years to yeah. do commentary. And um, I mean... Yeah, I mean, he's flown me out there. He's offered to give me a little... I know how much he spends, so I'm, I am I don't try to take anything from him, you know, outside of, like, flight and hotel or whatever yeah. like that. But, you know, dude, I, I love Canada Cup. I have so much fun there. Oh, yeah. Like I said, it's always one of the hardest tournaments to win out oh, of sure. all of them. You know, it's super exciting. Lapchi shows everybody there a great time and stuff like that. So. And I, I think it's too bad, too, because this year was... The first where it was really a significant major outside of just Street Fighter 4. It was a big KOF major and it was a big yeah, yeah, yeah. Marvel 3 major too. So it would be too bad. They had Injustice there. I mean, they had a lot of stuff going on. So it would be nice if we could see that grow into a little bit more. But if they don't feel like they're getting enough people, if they don't feel like it's worth the time investment, if it's too much money, all those things can go into people not, not running tournaments again, then you know, what can you say? You understand it. Yeah, so, I mean, but the, the real question that comes down to this is, is uh, obviously Lapchi can afford to do a lot of this stuff, right? Not yeah. a lot of other people can. No. So if they try to run an event, let's say that they're losing 20K, right? Not gaining 30K, right? Like, they're actually losing 20K. Like, I mean, is, is this just a bad sign? I mean, are we in this really kind of trouble situation where people can't run events or anything like that? Well, I, I don't know about that. I mean, speaking frankly, Western Canada is not the best place to, to put a major. Mm-hmm. It is very expensive to fly across Canada. Yeah. So people from Eastern Canada have a tougher time getting there than people from the U.S. Yes, it's more expensive to fly within Canada. <laughs> yeah, I don't know why that is, but that's that's the case. Um, so that sucks. So that that cuts down on the number of people who can go. Right. And people from the U.S. have kind of a tough time getting there too because it's not, it's pretty expensive still to go from Florida to to Vancouver or to Calgary, whichever mm-hmm. one you go you go to. Um, so it's it's tough to get the big crowds. You get awesome top players who who go there because they want to play each other and mm-hmm. other top players and they want to win money because there's money involved. Right. Um, but it's tough to bring in, like the the core of the fighting game community that like makes everything work. Right. So feeds in the entrance fees and the mm-hmm. spectator fees and and all of these things. I think putting in Vancouver was very smart because it's a bigger city. Yeah. Yeah. And it's uh, it's closer to the southern border and it's easier to get to. And if even that didn't work out, then I mean I don't know, man. It's it makes me sad, but maybe it's just not the best 
place I mean, to have it. The interesting thing too is like I, I saw a lot of people talking about you know eight ninety five is a lot. Th- wasn't this last Canada Cup just four ninety five to subscribe? I actually, don't know. I think it was I cheaper this year, and a lot of people did not oh. do it. I looked at the chat. I almost thought the chat was broken because nobody was typing in there, you know. Because still eight ninety five. It was still ninety eight ninety five. Okay. Yeah. Okay. But uh, see, and, you know, we have we have a lot of majors. We have a lot of actual majors, and we have a lot of tournaments that are like the under the major mm-hmm. level, but they're still big tournaments. Um, so it's not. It's it's tough. To, I think to maybe have as many as we are, and it's telling that the model of bringing in super top players. But like not necessarily a lot of other players, that seems not to have worked that well. Right, right, right. right. Which sucks. But. Uh, so, I mean, yeah, I don't know. I, I, I guess it's just like a, a sign to me because I've heard, you know, other TOs talk about how rough it is. You know, some other TOs yeah. that I've talked to have even mentioned maybe possibly not going again this year. Who have done I, tournaments I, for a while. So I've heard I, that too. Yeah, so I'm, I'm just curious, like... A lot of people are always saying, like, oh, my God, fighting games are in the dead zone. Or like, we're reaching another dark ages, you know, and I don't think that's the case. No. But if we run out of events like this, I mean, it is a problem if events don't make money, right? I mean, what is the right way to solve this problem if 8.95 is too much to subscribe for? I mean, Shadowloo Showdown was $5. So I wonder if a lot of people... Um, you know, it would be interesting to know if yeah. there were more subscribers for that. And the interesting thing is, like the five v five, like you know, he had that tournament there. He offered a bunch of extra prize money for that, and nobody bit. Yeah. Like there was three Canada teams. They had to generate three Canada teams to get you know uh, a decent amount of team. There were six teams total. Like you know, I mean, nobody went out there for that. I mean, it's it's interesting. A lot of you know, a lot of people are like, why aren't tournaments giving out more money? And then you have a tournament that gives out more prize money and then nobody goes. <laughs> so it's just like, it's very weird. I don't know. Well, that, and keep in mind, that prize money thing is not something that most players expect to, right. to win. It's, I mean, it's tough to see teams from all over the world get there and know that you'll face off against current and former EVO champions. And Yeah, some people are saying that Shadowloo Showdown had barely any sub chatters mm. as well. Okay. So, yeah. It's a shame. I mean, yeah, it is. I, I, we talked about this on the stream at Canada, and I've talked about this before. It's just like, you know, at some point in time, people are going to have to understand that if they want everything for free, then everything's going to go away. <laughs> you know, eventually, you know, these events yeah. need to start getting funded yeah. somehow, right? But the thing is, how do you make it worth it? Because, you know, subbing just to chat or subbing to get, you know, I don't know, like... Would it would people feel better if you paid like nineteen ninety five to sub and you got a t shirt or something like that? Like get some sort of physical item or something. You know what I mean? Like an extra benefit, some sort of cool benefit. You know what I mean? And I guess right now getting into chat isn't enough of a benefit. So yeah, I mean I kind of think that Twitch's own business model is kind of screwy on its own. So I don't know that applying it to other people. Is really that important? I mean, it would suck for for Calgary if, and not just for them, but for the cities all around them, for all Western Canada, Western to like kind of middle Canada, if they didn't have a local major anymore. They, I, I went up there to Canada Cup once. Those guys were awesome. Yeah, they were they were good players. They were very nice people. Um, we had a great time. I there was a big scene, a sizable scene. I've never been to Vancouver. I've never been to, you know, Winnipeg or anything mm. like that. But or as far as for fighting games goes. But I know that they have a lot of players there, too. So it would really suck if, if that blew up for them. But it seems like it might. Okay. All right. Well, we got a little bit more to talk about, some other scattered topics. Okay. Um, so let's uh, take another break and sure. come back with that stuff after this. Okay.